Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about books and kids, one of my very favorite topics. And over the years as I've lectured, people have asked me, well, when do we start uh, reading to our children? And of course they're thinking, you know, what age, you know, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, when do we start reading? And this is what I tell parents, start reading to your children in utero. If you want to raise brighter, smarter kids, early talkers, early readers, kids with sophisticated language skills and articulation, you start reading in utero. Now, when they're in utero, you can read them anything. You could read them Dante's Inferno or Shakespeare or The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. You can read them anything. What they want to hear, that little baby inside you wants to hear the sound of your voice. They found an interesting phenomena. If parents are reading to their children each and every day while the baby's in utero and talking to their children that when that baby is born, he or she will turn to the sound of his or her mother's voice when he, they hear it. They will also turn to the sound of their father's voice if they have been hearing the sound of their father's voice in utero as well. This is called mother ease and parent ease and it's incredible. But they've also found that children, that when you start reading to children in utero, that you will get a child who will be an early talker and an early reader. And I experienced this with my own son, my oldest son. Um, I read to him every day in utero. I talked to him every day. His father did the same. And um, he'd, he actually said his first word at five months. He said his first sentence at nine months. And he had talked he had taught himself how to read at age two. Now that's pretty unusual, but all of our children, except for one, my one son that had the uh, severe learning disabilities, all of them were reading before they went to kindergarten. And uh, they loved books and they loved all the reading that we did. Now, um, when, uh, when your child is first born then, the thing that I would suggest doing when you're packing your bags for the hospital, pack about 10 or 12 books as well. And after your child's gone through all the various tests and everything that they have to do, then prop your baby up and begin reading to him or her. It's a wonderful bonding experience. And what you're doing is you're starting a legacy. You're starting a tradition. You're giving them one of the greatest gifts that you can give them, the spoken word. And so read to them in the hospital and then continue on every single day, finding a wonderful time of the day to read to them. Let me give you a few suggestions. I think um, most people, and I have in you, if you go on to my resource section on my blog, Good Parenting Brighter Children, it gives lists and lists and lists and the ages and stages of uh, different kinds of books that you can read to your children. Some of the books that I took with me to the hospital was Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown, and I also took The Runaway Bunny. I tried to find books that were really bright and cheerful. Those aren't necessarily bright, but when you're reading Good Night Moon, make sure that you, you're talking to you know, your baby, but point out the little mouse from page to page. Point out how it gets darker from page to page. Point out how the clock changes every 10 minutes from page to page. There's all those fun things to point out to them. The same with The Runaway Bunny. I think uh, one genre of books that everybody likes, or one author of books, I should say, is um, Eric Carl. He wrote The Very Hungry pa Caterpillar, The Grouchy Ladybug, uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You uh, See? This is Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? So when you're putting your child down each day to have some floor time, either when they're on their stomachs or on their back, then surround them with books, books that have very, very bright pages, bright, colorful pages. I call these books Bold, Bright, and Beautiful. Years ago, I read a really interesting article about how Eric Carle uh, comes up with all these amazing, beautiful, colorful uh, pictures that he draws. He uses layers of tissue paper and he puts them together and gets the tissue paper so that you have that kind of a layered, wonderful, textured look in all of his drawings. And children love the sing-song rhythm of his books. So when your, your baby is down on the floor, then give them those times. Uh, to surround them by the books uh, and let them see all those beautiful, beautiful pictures. So again, to recap, you want to start reading to your child in utero about 10 or 15 minutes a day. It pretty much doesn't matter what you read. I had one son that read all of Eric Carle's books and everything to his children in utero, and I had another son that read the whole Narnia chron Chronicles to his children in utero. So choose whichever books that you love and that you want to read. The main thing is, is that they're hearing language and they're hearing the sound of your voice. Number two, take books with you to the hospital. 
and begin reading to your child on the very first day that they are born and read to them every day thereafter until they leave home at 18. And remember too, a lot of times parents think, once my child starts to read on their own, I, I shouldn't have to read to them. That's not true. Continue reading to them. It's a legacy. It's a tradition. It's something that you want to do with them. Number three, when they have floor time, uh, either on their tummies or on their backs, surround them with all different colors, colorful books that you've opened up to the brightest page in the book. Choose books under the, the caption of bold, bright, and beautiful. Let me leave you with a fun quote from Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.